Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a systems engineer at VMware. On this video we are going to see how to use NSX Application Rule Manager, a feature introduced in NSX 6.3 that helps applying the right micro segmentation for our apps. It works by first gathering and monitoring flow data, which is then processed to replace IP addresses and ports by higher level constructs like VM name or services. Based on that info, an admin can easily create the right policy. If required, it can be double-checked by a security admin and finally it can be pushed into the firewall table with just one click. Let's go and see it in action. In the lab, I have a three-tier app with one VM on each tier. Each VM runs a script that creates bidirectional ICMP, SSH and HTTP flows between all of them. We are going to use Application Rule Manager to analyze these flows and to create the policies that allow only connections from web to app and from app to database, plus an additional connection from any to web using a TCP on port 80. Application Rule Manager is available as a new tab under Flow Monitoring section, so we first click on Flow Monitoring and then on Application Rule Manager. Once here, we need to click on Start New Session and on the new window, we provide a descriptive name and then we need to select the virtual machines that are part of our app, for which we can use the virtual machine name or the BINIC of those virtual machines. In our case, we are using the virtual machine name. So we select our app, web and database VMs. And once we are done, we click on OK and NSX will start collecting flows of our app. We should keep collection running time enough to gather meaningful information, which in our case will be a couple of minutes. And for the sake of time, I will fast forward the video until collection is finished. Once NSX has gathered significant information, we can click on Stop to finish the collection of flows. If we look at the table below, we can see how the VM with IP address 172.16.10.11 establish different sessions to different IP addresses using different services, ICMP, SSH or TCP on port 80. If we scroll down, we can see different source IP addresses as well as different destination IP addresses. If we move on top and click on source, we can see the VINIX from which we are gathering information and if we click on flows, we can see for how much time we have been doing the collection. In this case just a minute because it's for demo purposes only. If we click on analyze, NSX will process the data and replace IP addresses by higher level constructs like VM names. We will see it in just a few seconds. So we now have the processed view on which we have VM names on the source and destination columns and on which well-known services are used as well. So we have ICMP, SSH and on the case of TCP port 80 we have the candidate services as NSX identifies them. And the same goes for TCP 8080 as well. So let's now start creating our firewall rules and I will start by sorting the source column so that all the web tier information is shown on top. Here we go. If I select all web tier flows and then click on actions create new firewall rule, the fields of the firewall rule will be pre-populated with all the all options taken from these flows, which makes things simpler. We just need to provide a descriptive name for the rule, in our case web to app as a source we keep with the web VM, as destination we remove the database because the rule is just from web to app, as services we only want to allow ICMP and TCP on port 80 so we remove all other services, and as applied to we just need the VNIC of the source VM which is the web VM. Applied to is a feature that allows us to optimize the use of the firewall by reducing the enforcement of unnecessary rules on any VM. Once we are finished, we define the action, in this case we will keep the default allow and we click OK. Once we are done with the web tier flows, we can hide them from our view by clicking on actions, hide records, which makes things simpler 
in order to keep working with our next tier, which is the up tier. So now we sort the source column so that we have all up tier flows on top. Again, we select them all together so that the firewall rule fields are pre-populated. And we give a descriptive name for this second firewall rule, in our case, uh, app to database. As the source, we keep the app VM. As the destination, we only want the database VM. As services, this time we want to allow SSH and TCP on port 8080. And as applied to, we only need the source BNIC, which is the database BNIC. We keep the default action allow and we click on OK. Once more, we hide the records we have just used so that the screen is cleaner for the next iteration. If we click on the firewall rules tab, we can see here the two rules we have just created with their name, source, destination, services, applied to and action as we define them. At this stage, these rules are already predefined and can be edited if we want to, but they have not yet been pushed into the firewall ta table, which is something we will do later. For now, let's go back to our flows to create two more rules. So let's say now we want to explicitly deny the traffic between the database and the web tiers, but instead of using VM names, this time we want to use advanced constructs. We can do so by clicking on the gear next to the VM name and selecting one of the available options. For example, we can replace the VM name with any, or we can replace it with the, a security group where the VM already belongs, or, or in our case, we are going to create a new security group and the VM name will be replaced by this security group we are creating. We give a descriptive name to this security group, in this case, new database security group, and we will use a static membership, so we are going to explicitly assign the database VM to this group. We select virtual machines, we select our database VM, and we click on finished. And automatically, the VM has been replaced by the security group we have just created. And we can do something similar for the destination, only that now we are going to use an existing security group to which this VM already belongs. So in this case, we use an existing web security group. So now both source and destination items have been replaced by security groups on this record. If we click on Actions, Create New Firewall Rule, we can see that now the fields have been pre-populated using these security groups. As before, we give a descriptive name to the rule, in this case database to web. We keep as source and destination our security groups. We remove all services because we want to block all traffic from database to the web tier. And in the Apply To field, this time we are not using Binix, we are going to use the security group we, we have just created, in case in the future more VMs are added to the new database security group. So for that, we remove the Binix, we click on Select, we click on Security Groups, and we select the security group we want to use. Here we go. And we click OK. So we have just seen another way of creating firewall rules based on the information gathered from the application but using advanced constructs like security groups. If we go and review the firewall rules we have just defined, we can see there is a mistake on the last one because we want to block traffic from database to web tier while the action is set to allow. So let's go and edit it, we click on the pencil, we select the right action and we click on OK. And now the rule is properly defined. So let's create a final rule to allow traffic from any source to the web tier on port 80. So for that, we click again on the gear next to the database VM and we replace it by any. Destination is web VM, so we can click on action, create firewall rule. The fields are pre-populated, so we give it a descriptive name, any to web. Source is pre-populated with any, destination is pre-populated with web. We want to keep the service TCP on port 80, but now in the apply to field we are removing all entries because since we cannot control where is the source, we want this rule to be applied in all the firewall. We click on OK and we are done. So let's do a final check of our rules. And we can see this rule we have just created is at the bottom of the table, so we need to move it up. We select it, we click on the up arrow until we get our rule to the top. So now we are almost ready, our rules look fine, but before publishing them, let's review 
how the firewall looks like. So we can see there is the default section and the, inside the default section we can find the default rules but nothing else. Let's collapse the default section again and move back to application rule manager. For that we click on flow monitoring and finally we click on publish to push the new rules we have defined into a new section of the firewall table. So we need to provide a descriptive name for the section. In this case we are calling it my new app rules. Once we are ready we click on OK and the rules are automatically pushed into the firewall, meaning they will start being enforced. Let's check it, so let's move back to the firewall and we will see there is a new section with the name we have just given and inside this new section there are four rules which are exactly the rules we have just defined. And this is the way we can easily micro-segment our existing applications by using NSX Application Rule Manager. Finally, remember VMware is a key enabler for the digital era because with NSX it provides better security, security that is very easy to operate as we have just seen and that complements the networking features of NSX building a complete platform that provides better agility, simplicity and visibility into the network. So again, thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the demo and don't forget to check my YouTube channel where these and some other NSX videos are updated. Thank you.